Hello. So, you may be about to recruit someone. What's the best way to go about this? Here's a suggested pathway of 10 key steps to take you from vacancy to successful appointment. Step 1. Assess whether you actually need to fill the vacancy, and if so, how. Making a commitment to a permanent appointment can be very costly. Are there alternatives worth considering? Step 2. Prepare a sensible job description which accurately describes the job and does so in results or outcome terms. What is the person expected to achieve in the role? Then write the person specification that identifies the key knowledge, skills and attributes that the successful person needs to deliver the job. Step 3. In your person specification, you may decide to set some factors as essential and others as desirable. Be really clear that essential really is essential. If there are too many of these, especially ones that really aren't critical, then this may dissuade someone from applying who otherwise would be an exceptionally good candidate. Step 4. Prepare an evaluation matrix at this stage so you will know how to assess and perhaps score each applicant as they travel through the process. For example, what will be your key selection criteria when assessing application forms or CVs? Make sure this is known to all involved, including the applicants, so the process is transparent and seen to be fair. Only evaluate criteria which are relevant to the job. Step 5. Advertise to ensure equal opportunity and to value diversity, especially if they are two of your company policies. For example, will you advertise in areas where you are underrepresented as a workforce or where there are hard-to-reach groups? Step 6. Narrow down all applicants to a sensible shortlist using your evaluation frame and scorecard. To do this, you might want to weight some criteria more than others to represent the importance or the significance of that factor. If there are still too many applicants and with equal scores, do not use a non-relevant tiebreaker, e.g. they play the violin or have read Lord of the Rings or are a Star Wars fan like you. If you need a tiebreaker, then either re-evaluate the weighting of the scores or choose randomly. Step 7. Think carefully before relying on just an interview. Though this is the conventional way of assessing people, is it really appropriate as a way of testing someone's competence for the job? Look at what the person will actually have to do in the job, then assess that, rather than ask questions about it. Many people, that I'll call an interview specialist, can blag their way confidently through a non-specific interview. They cannot blag their way through specific knowledge tests, and in particular, a skill test. I could describe a mortise and tenon joint. I could even draw you one, but I couldn't make one. Unless, of course, I had that particular skill, which I don't. Though people tend not to like tests, usually called assessment centres, they do favour people who can actually do the job, rather than those who can talk a good job. Step 8. Do the appropriate checks before confirming appointment. Any offer of employment should be subject to those being satisfactory. Step 9. If possible, make sure there is a probation period, typically six months, to allow you to iron out any creases and to ensure the person is fit for purpose, that is, an appropriate appointment. If not, work to address any problems and make it clear, if necessary, that the probation period could end in termination of contract unless the performance is as required at recruitment. Step 10. The whole process is of course an appointment process for one, but it is also a disappointment process for the rest. Make sure everyone is treated well as a customer of your RNS process throughout their journey. And at the end, be prepared to give feedback to those requesting it. You want them to speak well of you, even if they have been rejected. Thanks for listening.